A few thoughts now on the left-wing national media and its war on President Trump and the millions of Americans who voted him into office. President Trump still on the offensive today, tweeting the fake media is not happy after he corrected them and called them out for lying, distorting, and twisting not only his words, but reality itself. The press has become so dishonest. The press honestly is out of control. The tone is such hatred. I mean, you have a lower approval rate than Congress. They will say, Donald Trump rants and raves at the press. I'm not ranting and raving. I'm just telling you, you know, you're dishonest people. But he was exactly right, of course, in his forecast. The left-wing national media did that. They responded to the president's dressing down with nothing short of hysterics and hyperbole and a lot of outright nasty fiction. Listen to this sampling of a crazed few. It was unhinged. It was wild. It was sprawling. It was all over the place. It was a roadmap of his mind. It is a very disturbing roadmap in many regards. If you watch the whole thing, you go, what is going on with this guy? It was like a guy almost like on a couch explaining his problems to a shrink. When you have presidents take office, many of them are empowered and get bigger. I, do you think you have a president in that press conference that looked smaller? You know, Matthew Dowd, I mean, that's, it's the inverse uh, of what he said. The national liberal left-wing media is the one that is getting smaller and smaller by the day, less trusted than ever before. It is a disastrous ideological propaganda and disinformation machine. NBC's Chuck Todd also joining in the nonsense. He tweeted this, quote, This, not a laughing matter. I'm sorry, delegitimizing the press is un-American. Well, it's also not a laughing matter when the left-wing national media works to marginalize, demonize, delegitimize, and constantly attack the president of the United States without regard for truth or consequences serving only their collective ideology and their owners who've unleashed them on the people's president. We knew this fight against the establishment and media and Hollywood elites undertaken by this president would be a tough fight. I'm not sure the Republican Party and the Trump movement expected an outright war this intense, this violent, this vile, this early in the Trump presidency. But it is clear it's here. Now our quotation of the evening. This one from Cicero, who said this of the seditious forces arrayed against a nation and its elected leader, quote, a nation can survive its fools, as this country has often proved, and even the ambitious, but it cannot survive treason from within. We're coming right back. Stay with us. President Trump calling on the Justice Department to investigate the criminal leaks in his administration. I've actually uh, called the Justice Department to look into the leaks. Those are criminal leaks. They're put out by people either in agencies. I think you'll see it stopping because now we have our people in. We'll take that up with our next guest, former NSA whistleblower William Benny. Joining me now to discuss the White House uh, and the administration's leaks and whether the intelligence community could be the ones who are surveilling uh, and monitoring President Trump's telephone calls is the architect of the NSA surveillance program, former NSA senior intelligence officer. He is also an NSA whistleblower. We're joined tonight by William Benny, and uh, it's been a few years, and it's uh, great to have you here with us tonight. Let me start uh, with your assessment as to the likelihood mm -hmm. that this president is being monitored uh, and uh, surveilled by more than one agency uh, and from perhaps more than one quarter, whether it be the White House, the State Department, FBI, CIA, or NSA? I, I think there's no question of that, Lou. I mean, these, these conversations that are coming out uh, are the, the types of things that are collected under the programs from the upstream collection programs from NSA. And the biggest program that's doing it is the Fairview program. Uh, which is about a hundred taps inside the uh, fiber optic ne networks inside the United States and from those they're taking phone calls, emails, full take content and metadata and storing it so and also processing it. So there, I don't think there's any question that this came from the NSA programs 
The, the problem is it doesn't necessarily have to be NSA or NSA people in NSA that leak the, right. the conversations. It could have been people from CIA or FBI or DEA who also have direct access to that. But also I would say that the, these are very compartmented programs, so there's a very few numbers of people who are involved in them, and they're all, uh, they all get clear, cleared for the program, so they're all listed as to who has access to, the, to this data. And, it, if they, and, if they, and if they looked into the network logs inside NSA, they could see who was accessing those files. And, and how long would it, in your judgment, because I think this is a question most people immediately turn to, how long should it take, would it likely take, to have the FBI, to have whatever investigatory agency or, uh, or agencies move in and determine who is responsible for these, these leaks from whatever quarter of the government? Uh, well, I think they should, from the, from the and now analyzing the network logs, mm -hmm. from my point of view, I would think it would take no more than a day to figure right. out who, who was accessing it. So they'd end up with a set of people who they need to investigate more closely then, interrogate and have them come in and, te and questions. And this, this administration, have you ever seen a president, an administration, uh, at whatever stage, uh, so besieged <laughs> by leaks, by a national left-wing media that is trying obviously to, to destroy his presidency, have you ever seen anything like this? Uh, I never, I never have. I mean, uh, to me, it's a, it's a, it's basically. Uh, I think people are are reacting in a, in a sense of having fear of what what he might do and what he might achieve. Uh, from from my perspective, I think that some of the things he's doing is are really starting to stimulate the economy, and people are afraid right. that he's going to succeed too much and too well right. with that. And it may, might look them look really bad, and so I think they're going to try to find. They look any, pretty bad already. You're, yeah, they're, irrespective they're gonna, of the outcome. Yeah, that's true. But they're going to look even worse if the economy starts really going. Yeah, and and, and, and the markets, as we reported, are going uh, all not all, but nearly all of the uh, data that's coming in on the economy shows an economy that is moving considerably uh, in a positive direction from where it was even in the last uh, quarter uh, of uh, last year. Uh, you know, William, uh, let me ask you this. The, the surveillance that is, is, is being utilized, is there any way for this president to take control of that? And uh, because it, it's critically important that he have, as we know, trust in, and the, uh, in the agencies and the intelligence community have trust in him. Can he, can he win that kind of control against the permanent uh, government, if you will, the bureaucracy of uh, the intelligence community. Yes, he can. And uh, the way to do it is, of course, through the Department of Justice and the FBI and force them to, in, in, to follow the laws and the Constitution, in which case then they'll have to put some people in jail. And that'll start stopping this kind of activity. Right. The, other, the other point is he needs to unfund these actions being done by NSA, this bulk collection of data. Uh, regardless of who you are. They're just pulling in data on everybody, not right. just the presidents, the vice president, all the members of Congress, the, in, the, in, the intelligence committees, right. you know, the, the uh, judges on the Supreme Court, you know, generals on the gen Joint Chiefs, everybody. Right. And, uh, and, and it is uh, important to point out that the president has, uh, has called upon the Attorney General, the Justice Department, right. to, uh, to begin that investigation into these leaks. William Benny, thank you as always. Come back soon. We're going to have, I'm sure, uh, far more need of your services as this unwinds. Thanks well, so thank, much. Thank you. Thank you. Joining me now, the former chairman of the Republican National Lawyers Association, uh, leading Republican, Randy Evans. Randy, good to have you with us. Uh, this is thank a, you. This is a president who right now seems, uh, you know, if he were not up uh, on the balls of his feet, uh, going after the, the mortal enemies that the national left-wing media become. Who would be doing that? Would that be Mitch McConnell? Would that be the head of the Republican National Committee? Would that be Paul Ryan? And why the hell isn't Congress and the Senate talking about and defending this president against a screwball left-wing national media? I well, know it's the a truth long of the question. matter is, 
<laughs> it's not, but it's a great question. The truth is, President Trump actually doesn't need anybody to defend him. Well, he does no, no, a great that's job not, wait a minute, Randy, you're a terrific lawyer, but that isn't the but, question I asked. The question is, why aren't they? Well, I think because Friends they are Friends and supporters working. and allies don't need to be asked, do they? No, they don't. But I think that they, they're doing their part by moving the process along and moving compromise through the process, notwithstanding the Democrats' uh, efforts to delay them. But don't kid yourself here. What we have is a case of this. The press's hysteria has led to media dysteria, and they're just spewing it everywhere. Back, back home in my home state of Georgia, we have a phrase. It's called the hit dog hollers. After Donald Trump called them out, you heard every one of them, network by network, holler. I think you're going to hear a lot more of it as time goes by. Meanwhile, as the president occupies and marginalizes the mainstream media, you're going to see the Congress steadily repeal and replace Obamacare, implement tax cuts, confirm nominees. I expect nominees, them to do that, and every moving. American, I believe, in, in this country expects them to do that as a matter of course. My God, they've repealed Obamacare how many times or some part of it in some fashion over the course of the last five years? I mean, Randy, talk to me. I'm talking about why isn't this party standing as one against a national left-wing national media that has chosen to attack with the purpose of uh, simply with, with simple sedition. They're trying to stymie this president and his policies and overturn and subvert the will of the American people. It's that simple. It's that straightforward. And I don't hear anyone in Congress talking about it. Not the leadership of well, either, I, either, either house, Senator House. I, 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 would take, I would take issue there. I think both Speaker Ryan and, and Majority Leader McConnell have on more than one occasion stood up for the president, stood okay, up for his Okay, then I'm going to do that terrible them, thing. I'm going to say, forward. Randy, to you, like, you, like an attorney would. I'm going to pretend I'm, I'm, I'm a, an attorney. Well, where's your evidence, You're dropping counselor? to my level. Where is your evidence, <laughs> counselor? Think I of the last statement the main... made by either one of them that is an absolute alliance and support of this president and absolutely condemning the actions of the left-wing national media. The confirmation of EPA Director Pruitt now, I think, is a grand statement right by itself. If nothing else, the ability to get him Come on, him we're talking about statements, but we're not talking about metaphors for statements. But... And that's quite a distinction. No, I, you understand I this agree. question, so do, do me the courtesy of at least uh, assuming that you have some obligation to answer straightforwardly. I am answering you straightforwardly. Truthfully. And what I believe Let me is try this again. Every... Let me add the word truthfully, <laughs> Counselor. <laughs> okay. It's very, very simple. Some people speak through actions. Some people speak through words. Some people speak through both. What you're seeing the Congress do is steadily push forward the president's agenda as he takes down the mainstream media and the Democrats. Both are doing their job systematically and effectively. It's a lot like what we've talked about before, the first hundred days of the Republican Revolution after Speaker Gingrich took over. You're David, seeing a coordinated attack. Let me give you the one exception to, uh, to what I did say, and that's David Nunes, uh, the head of the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, he has spoken forthrightly, excuse me, Devin, and uh, he, and yeah. it is it's a it's a sorry performance, Randy. And the fact that you have to defend with uh, obfuscation or evasion is a sad <laughs> statement about how weak how weak this leadership has been in supporting the president who showed this party how to win and who represents the will of, of the American voter. Uh, it, it's, but my it's, question to you is, which Randy, would you rather you, have? You just used up your question. I, I'm out of time. <laughs> Thanks so much, All right. Randy Evans. Thank Thanks. you. You can ask me a question next time. It'll be soon. Believe uh, that sounds great. Uh, thank, thank you. Sir.